So please welcome Daniel Bruzual from Finland. He will be talking about deploy software containers on heterogeneous IoT devices. Daniel. Thank you. Hi. So hi, I'm Daniel Brusual. I just finished my master's degree and I was working with Docker Swarm and the Internet of Things. So I want to tell you some of the things that I learned and introduce you as well to the topic of Internet of Things. So we've heard a lot about it. I want to start first by saying what is my vision and why it matters. So the Internet of Things is represented by millions of devices connected to the Internet. These are everyday objects enhanced with sensing and actuation capabilities that sense their environment and also affect it. These devices are deployed everywhere, in our homes, in the smart city, factories, buildings, and even the forest. If we see most service providers nowadays focusing on IoT, they're offering a cloud-based vision, where devices push their data to the cloud, where it is stored, processed, monitored, and analyzed. This is not my vision. My vision, which is the fog computing, is to bring computations closer to the end devices. Instead of sending everything to the cloud, end devices, such as these, are able to pull their, their computing resources and storage resources and carry out computations locally. This is important for a variety of reasons. For starters, latency. If you keep processing in the edge of the network, it is much faster than sending everything to the cloud and waiting for an answer. Also, in some cases, there are security implications. You cannot send the data across, across the internet. You have to keep it locally. Also, it's costly. Mobile data, for example, if, if, if your IoT devices are connected through mobile data, can be very costly, and bandwidth can have a burden. And finally, by using fog computing, we are utilizing the resources that we already have deployed to the maximum. So I want to give you a reference scenario. Uh, picture a smart farm. There are hundreds of weather stations deployed in this farm that are collecting the humidity, radiation, and temperature. There are also ir irrigation systems that are watering these fields. And there are drones that are flying over the field and taking aerial pictures. How this is processed nowadays is that these devices would send their data either to, to a gateway or to a cloud, and it would be processed there. And then there would be some sort of a person that would monitor this data and take a decision. This is slow. What if these devices could instead communicate amongst themselves and take decisions swiftly? And that can be achieved with Docker Swarm. So in the cloud, we're already using Docker Swarm to deploy distributed applications. It's scalable, fault tolerant, and it simplifies provisioning. It also has a lot of networking functionality that makes it really easy to connect different applications. What if we were able to do the same in the fog? So we want to run distributed applications. We want to provision devices. Instead of having to go manually to each device and flash it with a cable, we just want plug and play. And finally, we want devices to communicate amongst themselves with networks. Problem is that unlike cloud infrastructure, which is typically homogeneous and powerful, these devices are resource constrained and heterogeneous. So they can, have, they can be made by different manufacturers, they can have different Linux-based systems, different architectures such as ARM or x86, and they can have a variety of sensors and actu actuators. So whereas in the, in the server deployment, we're just concerned with complete 
transparency abstraction of the underlying hardware, in the IoT, we're actually interested in the, in the heterogeneity. And secondly, these devices are resource constrained. It's when I deploy an image on a, on a farm, I don't really care about the size. It's gonna get deployed. But when I do it on, on the IoT devices, size, for example, is very important because it can lead to high cost. So starting with the first step, how to create a swarm. We've all seen the tutorials and the guides. You first go to SSH to the leader and you do Docker swarm in it. It generates two tokens, then you SSH to the other nodes and do Docker swarm join with the token and the IP and port of the leader or of the manager. However, when we're dealing with hundreds of IoT devices, this is not practical. We need a way to automate this. So what if we can bootstrap a swarm? We can have a configuration server that holds like the topology and the, and the design of your swarm. Then, as soon as the devices boot up, they run an initialization container that fetches the swarm configuration from this cloud. Then it automatically runs the commands to start and join the swarm. So in this way, we're able to automatically form a swarm without having to connect the devices. As soon as you connect them to your internal network and configure them in a, in a centralized cloud, then they can already be a part of your swarm. Then we go back to resource constraints. So we have to produce compact images. When we, when we use standard Docker builds, it usually leads to very heavy images, and these devices have quite limited storage. So for this, we can use multi-stage Docker files. So multi-stage Docker files are like a series of Docker files, one after the other, called stages. And we can use the first stages to build the artifacts and compile the code that we need. And then in the final stage, we can copy those artifacts. And that is what is bundled up into the final image. So in the case, um, I have here a humidity sensor application, which is collecting humidity data. And it's written in Go. If I, use, um, if I were to use a standard build extending from Golang, the, the end result would be quite big. As you can see, Golang itself is already 700 megabytes. And when we deploy in the cloud, we don't pay attention to this. Oh. Now, if we go back to if we go back to the multi-stage Docker file, as you can see, I am statically compiling my application so that it gets all the all the dependencies and libraries that it needs, and then I'm copying this compiled application into a new layer, into a new uh, into a new image that includes only this app. There are no overhead in terms of packet managers, or other binaries. So if we go back to the result, you can see that it, it went from 700 megabytes to only six megabytes. Then there's also the fact of heterogeneity. So we have multiple architectures that we have to support. In this case, for example, we have ARM and x86. But still, when I deploy a service on a swarm, I don't really want to have to deploy one ser the service once for one architecture and then again for the other one. If I'm running, if I have 100 temperature sensors and they're they are built by different brands, so for example, on the same sensor, on this and on this, and I want, I want to deploy a service on all nodes, I don't really care about the heterogeneity. I just want it to run everywhere. So we can use uh, multi-arch images or FAT manifest 
to, to do this, and it's supported by Docker Swarm. So what it means is that I can bundle I, several images of different architectures under the same name in a Docker registry, and when I create a service, each device will fetch the image for the correct architecture. Um, so I have an example here. So if I, I, if I build the image for the ARM devices and then I build the image for the AMD64 devices, then I can produce a multi-arc image by using a tool, third-party tool, developed by Phil Estep, called the manifest tool. And if I inspect, for example, node um, image, which is already a multi-arc image, I can see that under, under the same name, which in this case is the node image, node.js, I, I will have different architectures and different layers. So when I deploy a service, each device will fetch the corresponding layers for its architecture. So then that we have the swarm set up, we have the images built and place them in the registry, how do we actually deploy applications? And this is quite interesting because we can use node labels to model this heterogeneity. So for example, if I have thermometers, I, well, I should start by saying that node labels are simply metadata that is, okay, it's metadata that is uh, related to a node belonging to a swarm, and we can use these, this metadata to store key value pairs, strings. So in this case, I could simply model the type of device as metadata, device thermometer, the capabilities, the model, and then use this when deploying my services so that I can target specific groups of devices. So in this case, I could create a service that, that the, is deployed on every thermometer that monitors the temperature. I could also deploy a service by targeting only the sprinklers. And, I, and we could create a network where these two services can interact. In this way, the sprinklers can, can water the plants when the thermometer or the radiation sensor detect that they are too dry. If, if you're interested in the Internet of Things and Docker Swarm, there's still some work to be done. Um, one of the limitations is with Docker Swarm, it's very, it's very hard to access the, the native hardware so like the devices, for example, if we have a, a camera or if we have GPIO or I2C, it's still complicated. And another thing that needs a lot of work is the secure provisioning. So how to automate this, automa this bootstrapping of the Docker Swarm in a way that is safe? And also, uh, there is a talk coming up in uh, C0 by the guy who developed the, the tool to generate multi-art images. I also invite you to check out hybrid.com, which is a Debian-based distribution for the Raspberry Pi, which, with built-in Docker support. And also check out Alex Ellis blog, blog, and also Resin.io blog, which contain very interesting resources to learn more about the Internet of Things, Docker, and the Raspberry Pi. So thank you. Um, if you're interested in this topic, please come join me in a hallway track. Thanks.